Hey guys, welcome back to the show. The Real Thomas Markle Jr. and friends here on YouTube. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, I've been a little busy, took a break, all that. Everything's great. Uh, Dad's doing fantastic. Um, still uh, trying to get into my new place, but uh, almost there. Uh, a couple days away and setting up a new studio, reformatting the show, uh, going live. Uh, all kinds of stuff, lives, shorts, podcasts, you name it, it, it we're all going to do it. Um, and I want you guys there. So make sure you like, and subscribe and, uh, tell your friends and let's take it. Let's, let's, uh, let's build this thing and go big, start talking about everything that everybody wants to talk about. Um, speaking of every, speaking of things that people want to talk about, First of all, uh, I'd like to say on behalf of uh, the real Markle family, excluding the other one, um, you know, gosh, you know, I get it. You guys, you guys are getting the uh, brunt of it also, just like the Markles did for years, all the way from the beginning. It started out with lie after lie after lie, you know, just trash talking the Markles, you know, the family that doesn't exist. And... So, you know, it's just, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, the, the wrath of this person is not going to stop unless King Charles, you have the power to do this. It's time you open up a can of whoop ass and put these two in their place because it's going to continue. And, you know, she's she's proven to the world that all she does is lie. She did it to me and my family and my father and with no remorse whatsoever. I think she gets off on it. I think, you know, in my opinion, she doesn't feel good until she, till she hurts somebody, you know, and belittles them. And it's, it's sick. It's, it's probably at this point, a serious mental illness. If you ask me, um, she started out before the wedding, you know, the, the family she never had, uh, you know, it's, now she's got a new family and, and old Harry gave her a family that she never had. You know, the poor me victim card started many years ago and it's continuing and it's going to continue. Um, I mean, she's an orphan. She's an only child. She was poor growing up. She had to rub two nickels together at Sizzler to get a salad bar to share with the family. She put herself through college. With, with hard work and determination and working two jobs, you can do it too. You know, I've never heard such horse shit in my life. I'm sorry. And, you know, trash talking my family, like, like I've had to put up with for years, without the resources to fight it back and combat it. I can't control the narrative in the media. You know, I don't have, you know, millions of dollars falling out of my ass like she does. You know, and it's just completely unfair. But the royal family, you guys got plenty of money to deal with this. Um, you can combat this and you can shut it down. Strip the titles and put the grifters in their place. In my opinion. Allegedly. <laughs> um, it's just sad. I mean, it's, 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 it's really sad, but it's more disturbing than sad. Um when it, when you play the race card, right, and you play a victim of race or or uh, racism, you know, Megan never was exposed to any racism or racist remarks growing up because the Markles are not racist. And every private school that my father paid for for her to go to, there's no racism in those schools either. You know, racism does exist in every part of the world, but not over here, not in this family and not in your family, being the royal family. Um, for her to, you know, be a part of these allegations is so disturbing because it's almost like a desperate last straw for attention to bring light to her, to, you know, to, to salvage the 14 or 15 people that she still has supporting her on the internet. Um, it's horrible and it's just, it's so wrong on every level. Um, she needs, she needs, uh, help in my opinion. She needs mental help in my opinion, because obviously all the money in the world can't buy happiness. So this is something that's, uh, that was, uh, 
that she's that she's got going on upstairs and it doesn't come from the Markle family. It comes from the other side of the family, hers. You know, it doesn't come from us because the Markles have always been stand up, hardworking, honest, charitable individuals and we generally, you know, we, we care about each other and we care about people. Um, I would never, I would never want to hurt anybody and, and belittle them and talk down to them because I wouldn't want that done to me. You know, you treat everybody in life as though you want to be treated and generally you're going to do okay. In this case of that one, uh-uh, she's not going to stop and it's really sad. And, uh, so I hope you guys do what's right. Talking to you, Charles. Yes. Uh, put your foot down. Like I said, open up a can of whoop ass and, uh, strip the titles and get rid of these two already. Enough is enough. Um, what she's done to my dad is completely, completely unforgivable. Um, I have to stop saying, um, so much, but seriously, she didn't call him for his heart attack. The ultimatum that she gave him before his heart attack of if he, if dad wanted to go to the wedding was to disown me and Samantha. If, if. He was going to attend the wedding and walk her down the aisle. Probably had quite a bit of stress added on top of my father and probably led to probably having a heart attack at that point. But, you know, dad set her straight and said, I wouldn't disown any of my children, not even for you. I wouldn't disown you if Samantha and Tom said so. Why would I do that? But for not even calling or texting or I mean, I think I think there was one text or two texts or whatever, but five years ago or six years ago, um, and not calling for the stroke, not dropping what she's doing and go, you know, calling him. Dad's had the same phone number for twenty some odd years. No phone call, no nothing. Samantha's been in a wheelchair for over twenty some odd years. She's not a humanitarian. You know, she claims to be a humanitarian and this charitable person, and she's the complete opposite. She she makes these claims to to make people like her, and they're all fake claims because there's she hasn't called Samantha once to see if there's anything that she could do for her to make her life easier. You know, Samantha barely gets by, you know, on, on medical disability, and yet she still manages to persevere and keep a smile on her face and she doesn't have an easy life. You know, and Megan, shame on you. You should be completely, thoroughly embarrassed every time you show your face in public because I couldn't do it. I couldn't treat my family like that and pretend like nothing is happening when you go to any, any type of public outing. Because I know for a fact that people are just like, probably whispering in their heads, oh, yeah, 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 that's her, that's that, uh, that's that cold, cruel lady who, uh, for no apparent reason, disowned her family and, and spreads lies about them every time she opens up their mouth, you know, like they don't exist, you know? I, and honestly, I hope next time, Megan, you do public engagements or speakings or appearances, I hope everybody in the audience from now on just says, hey, Megan, how's your, how's your dad? Megan, how's your daddy? You know? Just, just, just drive it home, people. Anytime you see Megan in public, you let her know what kind of person she is. Because I will. If I ever see her in public, that's the first thing I'm going to say is, Megan, how's your dad? You know, no more of this, uh, you know, this PR mentioned like, oh, Megan, you need to make amends with your father. Um, that's the only thing that's going to save your reputation. Um, that's what I've heard anyway, allegedly online in the, in the, uh, in the, in the media online. And, you know, this one tier left, I go fake facade, you know, with Netflix cameras and, and microphones, you know, just, just so you can profit off of it and throw another fake scenario out there of the person that you're not. And I wouldn't let that happen. You know, I mean, maybe I would, maybe if Netflix called up and said, Hey, we'll give you $5 million, you know, to fake it, 
sure, why not? I'll do it. I could use $5 million. So yeah, Netflix, come on, give me a call. Let's have that fake teary eyed, fake tear, one tear left I go, microphone hidden up our ass. Let's have that documentary. Let's have, let's have that segment. <laughs> but honestly, I, I'm not going to subject, I'm, I'm not going to let anybody subject my dad to any more pain and bullshit that she's already caused him for years and years and years. And it's taken a while for him to get over it, but he's doing all right. Um, but I'm going to let him say that on his own words on a, on a later, on a later video that I'm going to do with dad. So that's going to be coming up also. Like I said, there's a, a bunch of things coming up, um, that are new. So it's, it's going to be a com completely great show, but for, for this race thing about, you know, what color the baby's going to be, that's not a racist statement. Okay. That's happened to my father at work when Doria was pregnant with Megan. Um, several people asked him and the blanket answer for any common question like that is as long as the baby's happy and healthy, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't involve race. There's nothing to do with racism in that statement. What color the baby's going to be. Everybody that I've talked to knows that for a fact. Everybody I've mentioned that to. It's a common question. Even Chris Rock said it. it you know, uh, pay-per-view in, in front of 100 million people. <laughs> the same thing. Not a racist question. So... It's just it's 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 just another sad, disgusting cry for attention, Megan. And God, it's just it's so old at this point. Every, you're like a broken record. Shut the f and go away. Seriously, crawl under a rock on a on a private island somewhere and just go away. It's just you know it's horrible. It's horrible that people have to endure this shit from you. I'm tired of it. Samantha's tired of it. I'm sure by now the royal family is tired of it. And, you know, just drag everybody down with you to your level. That's, your, that's, that's what you're trying to do because, you know, positive does attract negative and that includes people also. So negative people will prey on positive people, okay? I'm positive. My family's po positive. The royal family's positive. Everybody in your life is positive but you, Megan. Allegedly, in my opinion. <laughs> so, King Charles and, and Princess Catherine, you guys rock. You guys are awesome. I, I, you know, from everything that I know and have seen of, of Catherine, you're just amazing. Your soul is pure, honest, and amazing. And it shows, it shows in your beauty. Um, you glow. Every picture that I've seen of you, you glow. And that comes from inside. Um, quite the opposite with my sister, Megan, it just, you can see there's not a good photograph of her because that evil, dark, disgusting crap from her inside that's polluting her heart shows in her face on every picture. And that's my opinion, allegedly, by the way, <laughs> allegedly, 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 <laughs> but Anyway, so on behalf of the, the Markles, um, we don't know what happened. We have no idea. We don't know how she got that way. I mean, there was a few warning signs growing up here and there, and you can see it in old pictures. You can just see, and you can see it in her attitude. You can see it when, uh, you know, it, it, you can see little warning signs, but nobody ever imagined it was going to get to this level. Um, so, you know... I don't know if I should apologize for her because it's not like I didn't tell tell Harry a long time ago in a letter that I wrote him. Because if she turned on me like that for no reason and all I was doing was asking for uh, to get the paparazzi off my back so I could enjoy my life um, and then I get that answer back from the palace, from her people, that's distant family and I don't know those people, well, that's why I wrote that letter because... If she would do that to me for no reason whatsoever because of how we grew up together and there was never any problems between us or Samantha or anybody. But if she would do that to me, 
That's what I told Harry. She's going to do it to you too. And guess what, Harry? Bend over, pal, because you're because you're getting it right now from her. <laughs> and it never had to be like this. It never had to be like this. Harry, you should have put your foot down a long time ago and not let this woman ruin your life and, and run your life and tell you what to do. Allegedly, in my opinion. <laughs> but... It is what it is, and you know you make your bed and you sleep in it, and oh God, I, ew, what a horrible picture in my head. I couldn't imagine sleeping in the same bed as that. Ew. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to make this video and uh, get this out because I have uh, there's much more coming. There's a lot of comedy coming, but I wanted to address the elephant in the room, or in this case, the sea donkey in the room. <laughs> yes. The Montecito Sea Donkey. But anyway, now that I've addressed that, um, I appreciate your time. Make sure you like and sub subscribe. Uh, there's going to be a lot of exciting things com coming up in the show. A lot of lives, a lot of other channels participating in my lives. Me participating in a lot of other channels' lives. So it's going to be great. Um, you actually have, uh, we might even do subscriptions for call-in, for juicy and juicy information. All You know. Bonus tidbits with my father. My father will be on some videos. Quite a bit coming up. So stay tuned. And I really appreciate everybody's support. And um, don't forget to leave comments because I do read them. And I do answer some of them. And some of you know that. All right. Thank you guys. Love you. And I'll see you real soon. Bye.